Hi, I'm Simon from Safety Link, and today we're going to introduce you to our newest product, uh, a whole new range called the FastFit Modular System. We're here at uh, Building 2 in, uh, in Newcastle. This is our uh, testing and new product development area. So let's uh, take you in and we can uh, meet to the team and go from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the first phase of the FastFit Modular System. We're going to uh, have the guys build the system and show you all the features and benefits. So the first bracket is the C bracket. This forms the corner of the platform. Anytime we're joining platform extrusion to platform extrusion, we use this C bracket and four T bolts to join it. Uh, you can see this bracket has a few teeth on the back of it. They key into the platform extrusion. This gives us a very strong join as this can't twist. It also helps with assembly because I can leave the bracket in there while I place my two T bolts in and it ensures that this next mating piece of platform will line up at 90 degrees and align on the top surface. So halfway through building the platform, what's, what's one of the next phases that we, uh, we need to do here? Okay, so we, we've built the frame, so now we need something to support the mesh through the center section. For that, we use this lighter gauge extrusion and these hanger bracket. So this is bracket number E, or letter E rather. Um, these need to be a maximum of 700 mil from either of the ends. So we'll just measure these in. Same principle as before, our brackets key into the aluminium extrusion mm -hmm. to help us with this. It's a maximum of 700 mil, so it doesn't need to be exact. Key into the extrusion. I'm going to remove the tape measure there. I can install the mesh support bat and that is then fixed with a T-bolt underneath each side. Yep. And we'll do the same at the other end. Okay, cool. So at the moment we could put the mesh yep. onto the platform. We're not going to just to make, make it a little bit lighter for why we try to level the platform, just easier for the installer. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, first thing we have to do is cut the post. This is a 1500 millimeter high kit and we're only doing an 1100 high platform. So. Okay. We'll cut the posts off, make them the right height, and then level them on the platform. So now we're gonna fix the guardrail posts and the posts that will actually support the platform itself to the platform. So they're all one piece, as you can see here. Um, and they are fixed with a B bracket. So the B bracket works quite simply. Again, it's got a tooth that keys into the aluminium extrusion there, can be slid along, and then is fixed with to the platform with a single T-bolt in place. At the moment, we don't want to tighten that up fully because now we will add the post. So again, the bracket has a tooth here, which keys into the extrusion here and we want to take a measurement of the post. So it's 900 mil above the top of the platform, slightly under actually. Yeah, okay. So to finish this assembly, we get a second B bracket. Again, keys into the extrusion, into the post and it's fixed with another T-bolt. Final step is to put another T-bolt in either side, holding the post in place. So it is a reversible bracket, so it's the same bracket on either side yep. of the post. Uh, you'll see they are reversed though, so this bolt is technically in the T-slot okay. yep. of this bolt here. You don't need to put anything in this slot. As you can see, no T-bolt will fit yep. in there. But the, the beauty of it is it doesn't matter what side you put it on, it, it's, it's universal, so to speak. It'll only fit one way. Yep. The, the bracket does need to underhang here. So this is the top surface of the platform, bottom surface of the platform here, okay. the bracket underhangs. They can't be put the other way. Okay. 
Um, and yeah, so to finish assembly of this post, we'll just double check the dimension and tighten up all these T-bolts. So the next step is to build the support structure that just braces uh, the two posts together uh -huh. so that we get rigidity of the platform in this orientation. So again, we're using the same profile that we use for the mesh support, and we are again using an E bracket to hold it in place. So these just get hooked into the legs on either side, and we put the aluminium piece between those two sides. There, like that. It's fixed in place with a T-bolt on each side. So the final thing is to create a cross brace between these two legs. Yep. And that is done with this channel profile. There's holes in it in the end for the T-bolts to go in. And that just screws in between these two braces that we've put in place. Cool. So now we are installing the knee braces. Okay. So what these are is give us platform stability in the other direction. So the braces we've just installed will prevent movement this way. These will prevent the platform from moving back and forth in along the length of the platform. So again, installed with T-bolts through the holes here. Get one into the channel here. And then the second one into the platform channel. Oop. All right, so what are we doing now, gents? Uh, so this is the mesh that you would install on a platform if you do not want objects to fall through. So the holes in this are less than 10 millimeters, so it complies with 1657 yep. for persons to work below the platform. Okay. And then directly on top, we'll put the standard walkway mesh. Yep. This keeps the platform nice and light if you do need to make adjustments to it after you've put the mesh on. All right, so you can see there that the mesh is on top and we've got the, uh, the other sheet underneath preventing the dropped objects. So the next phase, stairs. Oscar. Yes, so we're going to attach the top tread first yep. uh, in order to make this as easy as possible. But the first thing we want to look at is our stair attachment bracket. So bracket letter A, and this is where our brackets start to work together. So we've, we've got the C bracket under here holding the platform together, which holds this member straight yep. so it can't rotate. Yep. And then our stair bracket, you'll see keys in here like that. And now, both brackets are holding the aluminium straight and the stair flat as opposed to the T-bolts. Okay. So same concept again, I see that, that you can just put it in and, um, and it holds itself. Wait. Yep, so it's sitting there. So first tread, we install the first tread on the brackets. Yep, so first tread. Uh, it just sits on the bracket, yep. the grip tape goes to the front. We sit that on, like there, we make sure we're in the middle. It does need a little push down on yep. either side, and it will stay there. It's fixed underneath, again, with the T-bolt. Yep. 
Uh, so the next step is to attach the stringers to the top tread. This is just an easy way to do it so that you don't have to hold any of the stringers. So the stringers come pre-drilled with holes in them. Um, you don't need to worry about your tread spacing. We'll show you how that works in the next step, but these are very easy to fix into the, each of the treads. And then at the moment, we just want these to be finger tight so this can still rotate. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is install the bottom tread. Actually, what that does is just hold all our stringers together and make it a bit easy for us to manipulate the staircase. It's done in the exact same way with the exact same bolts. So we've, so we've installed the treads now. So what's our, our next, next part? So the next thing we're gonna do is make sure all our tread spacings are the exact same height. So the standard only allows a few mil tolerance, but as you can see with our treads, they hinge yeah. about the top step yep. and they always remain perfectly level, the top surface. So all we need to worry about is that the distance between the floor and the first step is the exact same as the distance between the first step and the second step. Okay. So we've built this nifty little tool, which the bottom tread can sit on. And they're, they're available to everyone? Those they're available to everyone, you can purchase one. So we just measure the first step to the ground and then the next step here. And I can see that this step is much larger than the first step. So I just need to go up a little bit with my jacking tool, mm -hmm. sit it there and measure again. Still a couple mils below. Ah, and I've just gone slightly over the top. It is a bit easier though, because I can use this tool to just take small incremental steps down if it's tuned correctly yep. with this button on top. And I got 25 there, 23. And there we have it. Done. They're exactly the same. We know all the spacings will be the same the whole way up the rung because the holes that were pre-drilled by Safety Link in the side were, were there. So now all we've got to do is lock this staircase in place by putting the support posts on the front and then tighten all the treads in place. Fantastic. Let's do it. Okay, so this is the support post. So this is going to hold the stairs up at the front here. It's also going to take the handrail at the top. Uh, this is held in place to the staircase with two of our support brackets here. We've got bracket D and bracket H. Uh, we use two of these on each side to support that. Um, this, is, this bracket is completely adjustable because as you've just seen, I haven't set the stairs at a specific angle. They can be any angle between 45 and 30 degrees. So this bracket needs to be flexible enough to accommodate for that. So first step is to put our small bolt into the bracket, and then it's fixed with a T-bolt in the slot below the rail here. So keys in again, and then the T-bolt goes in there. Keep it tightened with a ring spanner. Hold it in place. Then we will take the H bracket and it will be fixed to the D bracket. Again, the H bracket has details to key into the post and it just fits onto that bolt that we first placed in the bracket. We repeat the same with the same two brackets on the other side and your post is installed. Uh, the next part is to put the handrails on yep. so that we can line up the second stair support post with the handrails there. So we'll get the handrails on the top here, line it up with the top handrail coming up the staircase there yep. and go from there.
Uh, so now we are going to put the knee rails in place and line them up with the handrails down the staircase. So we slide this in behind the post and put them on the knee rail spacer tools here. It'll just sit there so we can screw it into the post nice and easy. The final bracket that we're putting on is the F bracket. This is the foot. Uh, so these work in pairs on each of the legs for the stairs and the platform. And they can either be installed on either side this way or on either side this way. This is a compression fit. So the teeth actually bind into the aluminium as you tighten the T-bolt. So that's how we put together our uh, fast fit modular system. It's phase one, as we mentioned. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna do a bit of a recap with, with Oscar about the main parts about it. So if we come over here, um, so Oscar, I, I guess the stairs and how the stairs are built and how we um, install them is one of the big features for, for the uh, fast fit modular system. Yeah, one of, the, one of the key advantages of this system is that the stairs are adjustable without needing to measure every single step. So this is a five step system, but if it were 10 stairs in a row, which is the maximum that we're releasing in stage one, yep. you can adjust it in the exact same way, measuring just the, the step to the floor and between the first and second step as explained in the manual. Um, and that'll guarantee that all your steps up that tread or up that staircase are exactly the same. Okay, and the tool, obviously, the lifter into position is another key feature that we do provide with it as well. The Yes, the lifter is nice. It makes it very easy okay. to make those fine adjustments. Okay, one of the other key things I noticed you we mentioned as well is uh, the mesh side of things as well. Um, we've got standard mesh on top and then it's got a sheeting underneath for, for dropped objects to help minimise that. That was a, another one. One of the other cool features that I noticed was the bracketry. Um, for not only for the installation process, um, but but also how it's labelled and up, or sorry, labelled I should say A, B, C, D, um, and the key features around those. They also provide a lot of strength. So the, as this is shown, this is a very strong connection. Yep. But on our longer platforms, this is two meters. We can go up to six meters in a row, and the post can actually be up to four meters apart. Okay. Um, that's great. The handrail though needs to be supported every three meters. So we do have this as a standalone post. Yep. It's the exact same bracketry that we have here and that's strong enough to take the top handrail loads by keying into that extrusion there. Okay. And we mentioned phase one. So phase one includes, uh, was it 600 wide? Um, yeah, so it's the 600 wide stairs and the platform that suits that. So the platform's actually a little bit wider than the 600. Yep. Uh, it's platforms up to 2.2 meters high, which works well with the 10 steps that I mentioned earlier. And it's platforms up to six meters. Long. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, so that's phase one of our um, our fast fit modular system. Uh, if you have any questions or any information, please feel free to reach out and contact us. Thank you very much.